So today's project is working on finalizing the location of where I'm going to start digging post holes, setting the foundation for my 4x4 posts. A few of the tools that I'm going to use today, my 3 pound sledgehammer, 30 foot tape measure, and I've got some marking flags that I'm going to use that I made myself out of skewers and sticky notes because sticky notes are life. My life would not be complete without sticky notes. I have six more semi-permanent posts that I'll drive into the ground after I put the blue flags in and I ask the missus to come outside, approve of its location and where it's going to be and then I can start to put the stakes down <clears throat> and get a good idea of where I need to start digging my post holes. So let's get at it. Good old multi-tool. So here are my two inch by two inch semi-permanent posts which I'll use for marking a lot of different things maybe in the future but for today it's to figure out exactly where I'm going to put my post holes. Can't forget the Wawa. Stay hydrated kids. So I don't want the playground to take up too much space in the backyard but um, I don't want it near that wall where the tree is down. That wall is a drop off about three feet into other people's property. But I also don't want it too close to the shed because if the kids are running around it I don't want them to bump into the shed. And also if I put things on the side of the play, playground, I don't want it interfering with the shed and I don't want the shed interfering with it. So right now I'm gonna just kinda put my flags down, see how I like it. So part of it is I'm gonna have to measure at least eight feet across, eight feet back, and then I'm gonna have to make sure that my hypotenuse is square. <clears throat> so I wanna make sure that it's relatively parallel to the deck in the house. At the same time, I want to make sure that it's not a skew either because then my 2x4s and all my other wood and lumber is not going to fit correctly. So I got 11 feet on this hypotenuse and I got 11 feet 6 inches on this hypotenuse which means my I'm more of a rhombus so one of the directions across is shorter than you know the opposite opposing vertexes so it's more of a rhombus shape right now than a perfect square so I've got to keep adjusting my rhombus shifting it maybe side to side front to back to square off the shape rather than it being kind of a, a rhombus. I've got this thing down to being square within a quarter of an inch diagonally. So nice. Right now it's eight feet by eight feet and I've got 11 three and a half with that dimension and I have 11 three and three quarters that direction so I'm only a quarter of an inch off what I got to do next is I'm gonna actually measure from this flag over here uh, and this flag over here I'm gonna measure it to an even point on the, the deck. at least either the front two flags with the house or the back two flags with the back line property line so that the the playground from above doesn't look like it's shift it off okay because you know how we like everything in boxes so i've got to make sure the boxes all line up with each other okay i gotta do a little bit more surveying of the land back left which is my back left of the property the back left is 11 feet 8 inches from that wall that back right flag I'm getting around the 11 feet 6 inch wall so far it looks pretty good
All right, so we're square. I, it was slanted this way. So on a rhombus, if it's slanted like this, that's the longest length, which that's what that was, okay? Meaning, if it's a rhombus, this is the shorter bisector here between those two angles. And so I've shifted it this way to straighten it out. All right, so I've got my four stakes in and uh, so remove them and start digging away. So the post hole digger is probably about six inches in diameter. I'm probably going to try to uh, create maybe like an eight to ten inch hole diameter so that I can get the eight by, or the four by four post into here and then have enough room to pour cement around it after I create a stone footing. I need about 17 inches, 18 inches of depth. So I'm probably barely even about 10 inches in, not even cleared out 10 inches. To point out friends one of the reasons why it is so hard to dig in the ground in New York State is because it's all unsorted soil from the glaciers dropping all those sediments in the past unsorted so you got these big old cobbles and pebbles that are getting in the way of just going into that nice soil All right, I have dug out my four post holes, as you've seen. <laughs> um, I need to take a break, maybe get some lunch. The next installment of today is going to be put some of those four by four posts up. I'll tack them in place with two by fours. The land slopes just slightly on this axis here. So posts might have a difference in height of maybe an inch or two, not maybe an inch, not too noticeable. The back posts are gonna sit lower. The land slopes down and away from the camera. All right, update. We're back where I left off. I'm gonna use these two by fours to see if I can square off these holes to make sure that the, the center of these holes are as close to where I need the posts to actually sit. I might take the post hole digger and dig out the hole a little bit better so that I can realize that the center of each hole is the center of where I want to put the post. Um, after that, probably fill in some crushed stone and tamp it down. And then I see if I can get some four by fours up in the air.
Now I'm going to start adding some stone to the bottom of this, this hole. Also some of the cement will get into it, create kind of even more of like a firm concrete base. Old 2x4 on my sledgehammer, I'm going to tap it down, try to get it nice and even at the bottom, uh, flat and compacted so that there isn't any settling later with the, the structure itself. We got some crushed stone that I've tamped down and have leveled out. So I'm gonna keep adding that until I feel like I've got about two or three inches in each of these holes and then start loading up some four by fours after I feel like I have a decent depth. Alright, so I feel pretty satisfied. This is about 12 inches. To the pattern, let's get at her. So I've had an opportunity to lay out the 4x4 posts next to the holes that I just dug out. I've made sure that all the stone that I have in there is level. Um, right now I'm going to tie down or tape down two levels to the 4x4 posts so that when I bring them up I can figure out whether or not they're plumb, meaning that they're as vertical as I can make them. I'm going to attempt to then tack 2x4s to them to create stilts to hold this thing up in place with my nail gun. So good luck to me. Success, it worked, yes. Right now I've got one post up. So all the 4x4 posts are up. Next thing I have to do is check to see if right now the posts are square, squared off enough. I can continue to assemble this with the eight foot lengths and permanently tie them together. I am gonna start attaching a couple of sides just to make sure that they're eight feet long. And then I'm going to continue, I'm gonna connect it up. Sent three screws into this one. I might send more, I might send up to five in each of the corners on every side I go around just to make sure that it's extra strong and it's in those four by four is solid. So everything is plumb, everything is square. I am now gonna start creating the joists to go across in order for me to attach my decking to. I'm going to need to create an extra hand for myself. 
So just like these braces here that I use to hold the posts up, I'm going to tack in a two by four across the length of this and I'm gonna rest my two by fours on this side and then attach it on the other side. I also have to go through I have to mark roughly 16 inches on center for all of my joists to go across and attach kind of standard residential code for floors and even in walls. That's the end for today.